Good morning, folks. I trust you're well as we uh, start our weekend. Uh, whether you're working or whether you've finally got a break after a long week, I pray that you'll be blessed and all that uh, you might have a chance to turn your hand to this weekend and hopefully a bit re of relaxation over the process as well. We've been drawing encouragement from Scripture throughout the year uh, as we charge on through. Uh, we're now uh, working our way through October at this point, and uh, I certainly hope that uh, we've found some benefit from that, just that daily practice of looking at Scripture, having a wee time of prayer together, and thinking upon these things and I hope that's been helpful for you I've certainly found benefit from it also and it'd be great also to hear from you as well it's nice to have a bit of a, an interchange there also and we've been working our way through the letter of Romans with our Bible reading challenge working our way through all the whole of the New Testament but that's where we are at the minute and we're looking at chapter 15 today it really follows on from what we looked at yesterday and if you haven't looked at that please do feel free to to re re review that material from yesterday um, but when we look at what we're looking at today, perhaps contains some hard things. We started to talk about how we act towards others when our conscience allows us to do something, but the other person maybe finds that a little bit more challenging and, and where that often becomes a, a difficulty for a relationship. And, and consequently, uh, relationships, can, relationships can break down because of these kind of things. You know, offence can, can be taken, uh, whether it's caused genuinely or not. That's part of the problem. Paul continues a little bit further with that theme, but brings in some other things as well. So let's get into our reading today, which is, as I say, Romans, let's to the Romans, chapter 15. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbour for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, as, that is, as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. But on some points I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience, by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Elycium, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But, as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. 
But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain, and to be helped on my journey there by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem to bring aid to the saints, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. For all they were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. When therefore I have completed this, and have delivered to them what has been collected, I will leave for Spain by way of you. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. May the peace, may the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Indeed. And uh, what encouragement we find within this portion of uh, the letter. We draw towards the end now with another chapter to go tomorrow. And we won't be tarrying long at that because it's a busy day tomorrow. But um, what, what have we got today by way of, of encouragement? And, and some of these more difficult things that Paul suggests that he had to bring to their attention. And by extension, to bring to our attention as well. I said at the beginning that uh, yesterday we talked about um, things that we may feel is right and other people don't, and the difficulties that that can uh, bring about. At the outset of that, Paul talked about those who were weak were the ones who didn't have an, an open conscience to all sorts of things, like being able to eat meat of, of different types and from different places, and, and so on and so forth. The weaker ones found themselves unable to do that, and they injured their conscience when they did these kind of things. The same thing with drinking wine. Paul mentions that. Some were teetotal. Some felt because of the, the previous history they'd, they'd had themselves of overdoing it, that when they saw other people drinking wine, that, that maybe they shouldn't be doing that. And then they maybe injured their conscience, their own conscience, by partaking when probably that wasn't right for them. We've mentioned this in, in other letters from Paul as well, but here we find it here. But we find in this chapter that having stated that and having stated that we're not under judgment before God for doing certain things which there's no prob real problem with. But nonetheless, in this chapter, we find at the outset, Paul suggests that if we are strong, if we claim to be strong in faith, and thus we're able to do so many different things, um, we should bear with those who are weaker for the sake of their conscience. Now, I want to phrase it around a different way. If we're the one who is finding ourselves um, being offended because somebody does this, that or the other, we may want to actually look to ourselves and consider whether or not we are actually the weaker person because we are finding offence in other people. The stronger person finds less offence in others and has far more tolerance for the variety of views that people have on a wide range of, of ideas beliefs, dogmas perhaps, um, but, but also practices as well. And we do well to think on that in so many different aspects of life. Paul, in the last chapter and in this, is, is making very clear that our salvation before God is, is based, we saw this yesterday particularly, is based because of our faith in Christ. That, that, that love of God is what is first and foremost. That's the salvation issue. The behaviours that we might then accompany our, our spirituality with are, are secondary. So if we were to point the finger at somebody and say, you can't be a Christian because you're doing X, Y and Z, actually what we're doing is we're proving ourselves to be the weaker Christian. We think we're so strong in faith that you know we, we, we wouldn't tolerate this, that and the other. Actually, we may, might actually want to just consider whether we've got that the wrong way around. We're actually weaker in faith because we can't tolerate the fact that different people have different consciences. They're at different stages of the journey of faith. And, and if they love Christ, then, then God loves them. And so why do we have any right 
to, to start denigrating them. These sort of thoughts came out more in yesterday's reading, but they really are uh, emphasized today because this of this view of who is weak, who is strong, and how we sometimes get that the wrong way around. And so I guess along with the Apostle Paul, I would give a caution to myself and to you that um, we ought to be very careful about judging one another. The most important thing is that we love Christ and God loves us because of that. Judging one another starts to put us in a very sticky wicket when it comes to um, how God views that and, and how we in turn are affecting our relationships with one another. Precious relationships, the relationships between Christians, whatever their backgrounds, and as Paul goes on to express, be it Jews or Gentiles, is, is, is irrelevant it has a bearing on how we might feel about things, but, but it's irrelevant before God, ultimately, because he's not partial. Uh, and, and it also should have less relevance to us in our developing our better relationships with one another. We should always seek and strive to have a better relationship with one another, even if they're doing things that we wholly disagree with or feel the scriptural warrant for uh, for disagreeing with. So many things in Scripture, there are things you would find one verse saying one thing, another verse saying something else. And it's the context that's more important. Um, and so you know, that those kind of almost contradictions on how people feel about certain behaviours, should you drink, should you not drink? Let's just take that as an example. Um, that, that's where it really starts to rub against one another and we start to perhaps get offended when we really ought not. That isn't just between Christian brothers and sisters. Um, those who follow Christ, that's in all of our relationships with, with other people as well. Um, people hold themselves to their own standards. I don't know about you, but I think a, a little bit of tolerance can go a long, long way. And there are all aspects of life with which we can apply that particular truism to. I hope that's helpful. Um, we, we see here that Paul is, as he comes towards the, the end of his letter, there's another chapter to Joe, is, is talking again about how much he longs to be with these ones. He's got to go to Jerusalem first to take that gift there. He hopes to go to Spain, but, but meanwhile, en route, he's having to get to Rome and spend some time with these Christians. I'm missing all of you. I hope to see you again soon as well. And just like Paul longed to see the folks in Rome, I long to see you. And, and hopefully sooner rather than later, that might be exactly the case. Either through this means, sure, this continues, but it's not quite the same as being able to see one another face to face. Paul longed for it. We long for it also. So let's have a wee word of prayer and continue on with our weekend, shall we? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that in your love, because you are love, you have looked upon us with that love and have provided Christ for our salvation. Because of his love, we are acceptable to you. And for our love of him, you love us all the more. We thank you, Lord, that we're reminded of this. And we pray that the, the tolerance that Jesus showed to all those whom he would meet and ultimately die for, in loving those who seem so unlovable at times, for those even who rejected him and spurned him. We pray, Lord, that with that kind of tolerance and love that he showed even to us, that we would develop stronger and stronger means to, to show that kind of love and tolerance to one another in all sorts of various circumstances. And we pray, Lord, that we would put first that love of you and our love of neighbour, so that others might also be blessed by that and know something more of the love of God towards them and in their lives and also by extension to start to show the love of neighbour to one another as well. Help us to grow in strength in our spirituality that we might uh, see that our own views aren't necessarily the final uh, order on things but really we ought to be looking to you. Bless us as we consider this this weekend. Bless us also as we look back over our past week and see where we may or may not have done this and forgive us where we may have failed. Help us to be stronger as we go forth. We ask these things in Christ's name, who is not just our Redeemer, but the one who has shown us so much love and shows us a great example in that also. Bless us please for him. I look forward to catching you tomorrow.
uh, when we read the last of this uh, this fascinating letter, and then we'll have another day at the start of the week to, to look at some of the themes. But until then, God bless, take care, and bye for now.